There is only one man in the world of boxing who holds an undisputed title. On January 17, 1981, Marvin Hagler scored an eighth-round technical knockout over Fulgencio Obelmajias to retain his middleweight crown. But there was a time when Marvin Hagler was a number one contender, and Vito Antifermo held the WBA and WBC middleweight titles. On November 30th of 1979, they fought to a draw in one of boxing's most controversial fights. Tonight, the long-awaited rematch. Live from Boston Garden in Boston, Massachusetts, HBO Sports presents World Championship Boxing. First, a scheduled 10-round middleweight fight between Tony Cheverini and Mike Baker. And then, the main event, a scheduled 15-round middleweight championship fight between the undisputed WBA, WBC middleweight champion of the world, Marvin Hagler, and former middleweight champion, Vito Antifermo. Hello, everybody. I'm Barry Tompkins, and it's a pleasure to share these HBO microphones tonight with probably the biggest name in boxing refereeing right now, Arthur McConti, and of course, our longtime cohort here on HBO, Larry Merchant. We've got Vito Antifermo, the former champion, against the current champion, Marvin Hagler. Diverse styles, to be sure. The good brawler against the good boxer. I see it more as a fight between a contrast in the styles and a difference in styles, Barry. The reason for that is, even though Hagler is a quicker man and a better boxer, he likes to move forward when he fights, and so does Antifermo. In their first fight 18 months ago, Hagler had it all his way for six or seven rounds. Antifermo came on in the end by backing Hagler up. If he can back Hagler up, he has a chance to make a fight of it. All important factor, Arthur McConti, and that, of course, is the fact that because Vito Antifermo was the type of fighter he is, it really puts the onus on the third man in the ring. You have been there many, many times. Tell us a little bit about how the referee controls the fight, specifically this fight. Yes, uh, tonight will be a very, very difficult uh, fight for the referee. We have a very competent referee in Davey Pearl from Las Vegas, and it is the duty of the referee, according to all athletic commissions throughout the, the world, the referee must break up clinches as quickly as possible at the least provocation. And if he breaks up these clinches quickly, it's definitely to Hagler's advantage. And if he breaks them up slowly, it's definitely Antifermo's advantage. All right, so we've got an outstanding fight upcoming. We've got Marvin Hagler, Vito Antifermo. But before we get to the middleweight... Let's take a, let's take a walk into Vito Antifermo's dressing room now and see if we can catch Vito. There he is. Seems sort of relaxed. I'm surprised, Arthur, that he's allowed to keep that beard. Yeah, I, there was quite an awful lot of talk about that in the paper. And that's very unusual. I've never seen it before. It can only help him. It can't help Hagler. And I don't recall seeing a fighter allowed to keep his beard either. Well, it all depends on how bristly his beard is. It might be a soft beard. Well, he's a bristly fellow. <laughs> there's, there's his cut man. Is pretty brown. I wonder if he's going to take a shave between now and the start of the fight. Well, it's neatly trimmed, I'll tell you that, though. It's not, uh, it doesn't look bad. Now, in a moment, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to see Marvin Hagler's door. Marvin Hagler won't let us inside that room, and I think I know why. He's trying to grow a beard as fast as he can. <laughs> so that Antifermo won't have any edge on him. Number seven. Lucky seven, that's a lucky number. Antifermo, the middleweight fight, and of course, we await the middleweight championship of the world that between Marvin Hagler and Vito Antifermo. And the middleweight division in general, Arthur, I think has been one that has been, not only had a lot of history, but has had a lot of great champions, champions that have gone on for a long period of time. Now it's time to look at the newest champion, Marvin Hagler. Where do you put him amongst all the greats? Well, I think that this fight will probably tell the tale. I do think that Marvin Hagler is a very, very good fighter, and I think he is going to compare with the, uh, he will compare with the boxers of yesteryear. This has been uh, traditionally a very fine division. They're strong, and they're powerful, and this is a fight that's uh, uh, pitting a slugger up against a boxer, and it should make a very interesting fight. Well, it's been a division of great champions. It's been a division of great rivalries. Some champions have gone on for a long time. The one thing about which there is no question, and that is one that it has been wrought with history. 
In the late 1940s, Tony Zale and Rocky Graziano fought three times for the middleweight crown. Zale won twice. Sugar Ray Robinson and Jake LaMotta fought five classic battles in their early years, but Sugar Ray won their only title fight in 1951. Between 57 and 61, Gene Fulmer handled Sugar Ray, winning three of their four championship fights. At the same time, Sugar Ray battled Carmen Basilio for the title, each winning a split decision. And in the 70s, Carlos Monzon dethroned Nino Benvenuti, beating him twice. And now the newest middleweight rivalry, champion Marvin Hagler's rematch with former title holder Vito Antifermo. the Boston Garden in Boston, Massachusetts. It's the main event, a scheduled 15-round fight for the undisputed WBA and WBC middleweight championship of the world between middleweight title holder Marvin Hagler and former champion Vito Antifermo. Well, we await the start of the middleweight championship, Hagler and Antifermo, and the first fight, of course, created all kinds of controversy, Arthur, and it puts the onus this time once again, as we talked about at the top of the show, on the third man in the ring. Now, the first time, it was a guy by the name of Mills Lane. This time, it'll be Davey Pearl. You had a chance to talk to Mills Lane about what a job he had. Yes, I spoke to Mills Lane earlier this week in Las Vegas, and he said it was a very tough fight to handle, particularly because of all the clinching. But this is the uh, this is the, the style of Antifermo. He has to get in and clinch and maul and push and pull and wear his opponent down. Whereas Hagler would rather have him off him. And if the referee breaks quickly tonight, of course, Hagler will be at an advantage. Well, Marvin Hagler and Vito Antifermo have had an episodic kind of rivalry. It's been one fought not only with gloves but with words. That first fight, well, that was one for the books. The rivalry between Marvin Hagler and Vito Antifermo dates back to 1978, when both men were top contenders for Hugo Coro's crown. And when the title shot arrived in June of 1979, it was Vito Antifermo who stepped forward and battered Hugo Coro to win the middleweight crown. Marvin Hagler fought on the undercard of that main event, and at a press conference the day before, Hagler claimed it was he who deserved the shot at Coro's title. The press found that Hagler's vengeance was much better copy than Vito's capturing the crown. I was upset about the way how they was doing things and how this guy go around me and write in for a title shot. I guess they both like a bunch of amateurs, and I remember the mark that I made, and I said I can whoop them both in the same night. Since I was the champion, and he started, like, uh, <clears throat> taking away the publicity that I, you know, that I wanted, I said, you got to be the first guy I want to fight. So, five months later, Vito Antifermo gave Marvin Hagler his long-awaited shot. Hagler's pre-fight barbs caused Antifermo to say, I never hated a guy so much. I remember, you know, that I said, hey, no way in the world this guy's gonna whoop me. You have to hype the fight up, you know, and me with my little gimmicks about the mosquito and everything like this. I felt as though that if I wasn't talking, if I didn't have the little gimmicks or anything like that, Marvin Hagler wouldn't be here today. When he finally got his shot against Vito, he said, now is my chance. This guy who refused to fight me before. Now, this Vito the Mosquito is going to get swatted like a fly. Vito didn't listen. Instead, they fought one of the most brutal and controversial championship fights in middleweight history. When the decision was announced as a draw and Vito Antifermo retained the title, Hagler was despondent. To this day, both camps insist that they were victorious. Most of the people that I've talked to, they know I won the fight. And they know the only guy to beat Hagler is me. Right now, I just want to prove to the world that I won that fight. But that's the fight that made Vito. And that's the fight that made Hagler look bad for his mouth. She just took his belts back, you know what I mean? That's the way they want to play it. But I felt as though there should have been an automatic rematch between Antifermo and I. But Jose Sullivan of the WBC insisted that Vito defend against number one ranked Alan Minter. So the rematch between Hagler and Antifermo was shelved. This time it was Vito who was on the short end of a controversial decision. Marvin Hagler was forced to sit and wait. Minter and Antifermo fought the first time, and there was a split decision. A controversial split decision, but nevertheless a, a split decision, not a draw. They turned around and they had an immediate rematch, and they forced Marvin to fight three other opponents and beat all three, ranked in the top ten, before he could have his promised second shot at the title. So every time Marvin got the fast shuffle, he got a little bit more determined and a little bit more angry at this antifermo person. 
Vito was given the rematch with Minter. This time, the bout took place in the new champion's home, London, England. And it was the task of Marvin to try to understand why Vito Antifermo was given a second chance to gain the middleweight title. They know they can't whoop you, so they got to push you out of the picture. And they just put me on a warpath. I couldn't see how all of a sudden they went around me and right into Antifermo. You know, it shouldn't have been that way. I just start destroying my opponents, you know. I want everything hard for me because when it's hard, it makes me work hard. I don't like things that come easy to me. Finally, on September 27, 1980, it was Marvin's turn to try and take Minter's title. Vito Antifermo was an interested observer. So, of course, I was rooting for Hagler, and I seen Hagler, and, and uh, you know, tell, and I told him what to expect. I don't listen to this. Right now, I had Minter on my mind. I didn't even want to look at Antifermo's face. Marvin Hagler mauled Alan Minter, and the middleweight title was his. Still, Vito Antifermo was not a believer. Anybody that he fought or he's going to fight, he's going to destroy it, because he's got that style. As long as he fights this kind of guy, he's going to look good until he fights me. When he beat Alan Minter in the third round, the first thing he wanted to do was to get back into the ring against Vito the Mosquito because that was the only blemish on Marvin Hagler's record. Which brings us to tonight, the culmination of three years of a bitter rivalry, Marvin Hagler and Vito Antifermo. No, he's got that chip on his shoulder. It's just something that I have to prove to the people and to myself. And he intends to make sure that the American public remembers Vito Antifermo as being a loser to Marvin Hagler. Wayne Wright's, uh, I don't know, he's, I think he's a cook. <laughs> At this point right now, I'm much better in shape than I ever was for the first title fight. It's just that it just had to happen, and I knew it would have to happen, you know, and uh, just with time. a brawler where there is a brawler there are cuts where there are cuts there is controversy and that is the subject of what larry merchant has to say right now larry the controversy between these two fighters reached comic operetta proportion this week although with serious undertones the dispute came over the kind of sub that antifermo can use over the cuts that inevitably come and usually over his eyes for his part, Antifermo would use the strongest potion that anyone could make, even if it was illegal and even if it could damage his eye. He'd let them use a blowtorch or a soldering iron if it would extend the fight for a round or two or his career for a fight or two. For their part, the Hagler people aren't necessarily worried about Antifermo's health. They'd like to see him bleed like the Red Sea if it would end the fight as soon as possible. Well, nobody ever said the Boston Garden was a rose garden. In fact, between their two fights, just about six months ago, Antifermo was operated on surgically to cut down on the bone over his eyes in the hopes that that would cut down the bleeding that he usually suffers. In the one fight he's had since then, he did not suffer any cuts over there, but he did spring leaks elsewhere, and he was knocked down twice. Antifermo has been a brave bull through his career, strong, very sturdy, durable, a tough man and spirited. But tonight, his real problem isn't the sob over his eyes so much as the bomb he'll need after his expected defeat. Now back to Barry. Well, thank you, Larry. Some astute observations, I think. Since the surgery that Larry Merchant talked about, Vito Antifermo has had only one fight. He won that fight. It was a decision over Mauricio Aldana, and he did cut. He did not cut in the area that he had the surgery, however, and the cut was caused not by any punches, but rather by a butt. He said it was one of the toughest fights of his career, of his career and he was something less than an impressive winner. As Antifermo comes down now toward the ring apron and steps into the ring for his try, yet another champion try against Marvin Hagler. There is Vito Antifermo, and I don't think there's any question who the public choice will be here in Boston. Listen to the crowd and listen to the reaction. Antifermo looking all business. There was another factor in that fight against Aldana, and that was the fact that he was knocked down twice in the first round of that fight, and that is the only two times that Vito Antifermo 
Matt DiPerlo has been knocked off his feet in his career, so whether or not that's a factor, Larry Merchant, remains to be seen. He was quite cold at that time. He was more concerned with his cuts than anything else. But if, if this is his last hurrah, he's going to be well paid. He'll get $200,000 for this fight. Hagel will get at least twice that, possibly more, depending on the gate. Arthur Mercanti, let's talk a little bit about strategies. Vito Atapurma lost the first few rounds in his last fight against Marvin Hagler. What does that mean? Is he going to have to come out a little bit stronger than he did the last time? Well, the strategy, uh, Vito's strategy is uh, as the, the longer the fight goes on, the better chances he has, and that was indicated by their first fight that went to a draw because he came on very strong. From the eighth and ninth round on, he, he won on the uh, practically all three officials unanimously agreed that he came on strong and won those latter rounds. They won that last fight and of course was voted a draw and probably one of the most controversial championship fights in history. It screamed for immediate for an immediate rematch, but that was not to be. Not to be until tonight, June 13th, 1980, and this is the fight that everybody has been waiting for. Vito Antifermo, who has sprouted a new beard, and incidentally we talked a little bit about the beard. We thought perhaps there might be even more controversy and people asking him to shave the beard. That has not been the case either. No, I, uh, I, it's the first time in all my experience in boxing that I've seen a boxer like Ed Fermo tonight with a beard. But look, but looking at his beard, it's all, it seems to be kind of a soft, bristled beard. It's not an annoying type that will uh, annoy Hagler. Oh, I think the crowd now tells you what, what is happening outside the ring. Coming out of the locker room and making his way toward the ring now is the champion, the undisputed middleweight champion, and a man who right now could probably be elected mayor here in the city of Boston. He is from just down the road in Boston. on the challenge of Vito Antifermo. He made him come in first and wait for him. Hagler coming down toward the ring now. Marvin Hagler, probably the most popular athlete in the state of Massachusetts right now, and that is with all due respects to the likes of Carl Yastrzemski and Larry Bird. Watson seems to be producing some pretty good fighters. It's interesting also to tell you that I'm from Boston, Mass. Originally born and raised in Boston. Great fighters and great officials, it seems. Marvin Hagler comes into the ring amidst the chairs of the crowd here at the Boston Garden. A crowd that looks to be close to a full house. There was some discussion about the fact that maybe Marvin Hagler wasn't promoting this fight, selling tickets to this fight as well as he should have. Well, the end result has been an air full house. And we are just about set to go to the ring announcer now for the introduction of the fighters. Here's Nuno Cam. Nuno. Ladies and gentlemen, the feature attraction of the evening, 15 rounds for the middleweight championship of the world, promoted by top rank Bob Arum, New York, and Rip Valenti, Boston. His bar is under the supervision of the Massachusetts State Boxing Commission. Commissioners are Chairman Walter Byers, John McGinney, and Jimmy McCarran. Officials working for this bar are judges Tony Castellano of Jackson Heights, New York. together in the center of the ring. The inevitable stairs going on. Both fighters seemingly very relaxed as we await the start of round one of the middleweight championship. Those are the shortest instructions I've ever seen. <laughs> they know what this is about. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I notice that Hagler's sporting a beard also, isn't he? Here's the tail of the tape right here. Comparable numbers, as you see. Each man coming in right around 160 pounds. Hackler right out 160. Antifermo a pound and a quarter less. Middle to 
choose between the two. Round one, at the front of the challenger. He wants back what he once had. Marvin Hagler, the champion. He has what Antifermo had and what he wants. Hagler will switch from lefty to righty. Antifermo, generally speaking, will bore in. Hagler, the aggressor, early on missed with those. Hagler's best bet in this fight is to stay at long range and keep finding the firm on the outside. I think that's possibly what he's going to do. And right away, a, a butt, butt. And a butt. on the first it occasion, was... a butt has opened the forehead right below the hairline of Vito Antifermo. And it was Antifermo who instigated the butt himself. 45 seconds into the first round. It can't have an effect. It is a nasty cut. A nasty cut. The cut's right at the top of the forehead. Nothing to do with his surgery, however. Freddie Brown is yelling to the referee, Davey Pearl. Let's talk about that for a minute, Arthur. Now, what would he be saying? Well, he's telling Freddie Brown to sit down, not to come up on the ring apron, which is uh, really illegal. It could create a fine. And a fine system. What did Brown want? What did Brown, Brown want? Brown wanted, uh, wanted Davey Pearl to look for the head. He probably thinks it was uh, the fault of Hagler on that butt. Now, Davey Pearl is going to have to make a decision on whether it was an accidental or an intentional butt. Is that not That's right? That's his decision to make. That's correct. And if the I... fight winds up being called because of an accidental butt, it is a technical draw. And Marvin Hagner will retain the championship. A very, very unfortunate thing early in the fight. We expected to see a bloody fight, but we did not expect to see it for the reasons that it was caused. Uh, that was certainly an accidental butt. It wasn't deliberate on the part of anybody. It's just the style of Antifermo who comes in with his head down that way, and that's what started. Well, you hate to see a championship fight go like that this early. It happened 45 seconds into the first round. There has been not a serious punch thrown, not a punch that has done any damage. It was a butt on the first lunge, if you will, of the fight by Vito Antifermo. There's a lot of blood. I think that Hagler was equally as surprised as Antifermo when he came out and saw the blood. Yeah. It's just a shame, because whatever artistry there might have been in this fight will be for naught. Well, it might, uh, it might appear to be much worse than it really is. After Freddie Brown works, he'll have a better determination. It will be a frantic one minute between rounds, between the first and second round. The first round, I must say, has been an interminable three minutes. There is a lot of blood right below the hairline of Vito Antifermo. The real question is whether the blood is getting into Antifermo's eyes. The, blood, the cut is not a dangerous cut. It's whether the blood blinds Antifermo. And to this minute, you can't really say that it was that it affected him. Let's take a look in the Vito Antifermo's corner now. It is going to be a frantic one minute. No question about it. Get up. Freddie Brown is going to have to get out the blowtorch on this one. Now, can they, let me ask you a rather technical question here, Arthur. Can Davy Pearl call what would be the equivalent of a timeout? and give them time to repair no, that because no, it was an accidental fight. No, he cannot fight. do that. No, no. Uh, Freddie Brown has just got to do the best he can to stop that bleeding. If he does, it's going to interfere, as Larry says, with the uh, his sight. The doctor is sticking his nose in there and examining his eyes, as you can see. And there is a great discussion going on in the corner right now. Doctor.
said the fight should go on. That means that if they don't let the fight go on, Anthony Fredo will be declared the loser. That's right. That's right. That's right. But Freddie, Freddie Brown is the one who insisted that the fight was over with. The fight. Well, I think now what Davey Perl should do is clear the ring, get Freddie Brown and get that trainer out of there and get the fight going. These two fighters might now, as you see them in the middle of the ring, start fighting. Behind us, promoter Barb Aram is yelling at the referee to get them out of the ring That's or else their fight be disqualified. I don't know if if Freddie Brown was trying to be clever and save his fighter a few minutes to give that cut a chance or not. Now or whether he was just excited and genuinely believed what he was arguing about. I, I do believe that's true. Well, he was pretty adamant about it. Round two. They have not been able to stem the flow of blood completely from Vito Antifermo. That certainly will change Antifermo's tactics. And the promo's just going to have to go out there and get him. There is no further blood. You'll notice the that the does lead with his head an awful lot. He's got his head up and he leads in first with his head. There was no question but that he lunged at Marvin Hack. And when he came up, there was a nasty cut on the forehead. We then had about a two-minute debate at the start of round two, and Hack was sticks him pretty good that time. trying to measure his man. Both fighters are going to have to get their concentration back. There had to be a lapse of concentration during that discussion. Anthony Fermo is giving all that he can. He's just trying to do, uh, just trying to knock him out with one punch, which is really quite impossible for him. Vito. Uh, Hagler, of course, has not lost a fight since 1976. Ironically, the two fights he did lose in 1976, the only two fights he's lost in his career, he lost within a two-month period. And blood again shows, this time under the eye, actually, of Vito Antifermo. Hagler goes after him, hits with a combination. This has nothing to do with a butt in the first round. Another right hand scores against Antifermo, who now leans in on Marvin Hagler, the champion. Uh, Vito is totally defenseless at this point, and he's got another cut right under the, uh, the, the left eye. And now the cut from the forehead, again, showing blood about halfway through round two. continues to pepper the forehead now. His forehead is not spouting blood as seriously as it did in the first round. That's very important. Freddie Brown did an excellent job of starting with stopping the flow of blood. And again, Hagler sticking that right hand on the forehead of Vito Antifermo. But while it looks like there's a lot of blood, there is not as much blood, certainly, as there was in the first round. Vito keeps coming in continually. If he would try, and of course he can't because that's his style, just to back up a little bit and get a little rest. But and Hagler, Hagler effectively sticking that right hand in the face of a bloodied Vito Antifermo, who comes back now with combinations to the head and body, but not very effectively. Once again, Antifermo with two right hands. And a left hand by Hagler, as he has Antifermo against the ropes. Antifermo spins away. And we come to the end of round two. Two fighters exchanging words. Well, this is what is known as a bloody war. Let's see what they're doing in there now, if we can get under Freddie Brown's arm. He's applying all of the skill and while of a half a century in the ring. He stemmed the flow of that blood after that first round with that long delay. He's back on top of it now. Now let's take a look at the butt that caused the bloody that bloody flood. There it right is right there as you saw Antifermo jump in. He definitely jumped in. You can see the blood starting to trickle over his left eye right now. There's Antifermo going to it and he senses it. Very definitely as we earlier saw it. It was Antifermo leaping into Hagler. The guy was leading with his head. Not leading with his right or left. Should point out, Larry Merchant, always the fashion plate here. Not to indicate that this is a bloody fight, but Larry, folks, is wearing a bib. A lobster bib. <laughs> <laughs> Round three, in the meantime. See what a job Freddie Brown has done. 
Good left hand that time by Hagler. Antifermo also has a cut underneath the left eye. Hagler's jab is very effective tonight. And another good right hand right to the eye. And again, another jab. Always on the damaged area. Always on the damaged area. It may not be a pretty scene, but it is the job. It seems that Hagler... And there is a left hand that puts Antifermo down. A left hand to the forehead by Marvin Hagler put him right on his backside. Didn't seem to hurt him. Seemed to stun him more than it did hurt him. He didn't seem to know where he was for a moment. That is only the third time in the career of Vito Antifermo that he has been knocked down. Twice in his last fight. blood showing from the scalp of Vito Antifermo. Showing more in this round, actually, than it did in the last round. Hagler just kind of measuring his man. Hagler seems quite calm. Not excited at all. And is using a great left jab. His jab is just great. That right jab is just scoring at all times at that vulnerable cut. Hagler, who often will switch to a right-hand style, unlikely to do so in this case because all the damage is to the left side of Vito Antifermo's face. So you would have to think he would likely stay with that right jab. And coming in underneath the defense that time and staggering Antifermo once again is Marvin Hagler. Again, Antifermo coming at his man, trying to smother him. There is blood on Hagler now, too, but it is from Antifermo. And Hagler, again, peppering his man two, three, four times to the face of Vito Antifermo. It just seems to be too much head contact, if you'll notice, when on the inside. And now blood flowing freely again from the forehead of Vito Antifermo. And most of that really is still being done with the head, not with the fist. apologizing to Marvin to uh, Vito Antifermo. To say that Vito Antifermo is game would be to make a great understatement. Yeah, he is uh, a mauling, brawling type of fighter who never, never gives up. He's, he's just very brave in that. I think we mentioned earlier he has been cut in every fight that he's had, with one exception, and that was a fight that he lost in a 15-round decision. And going back to Antifermo's corner, I don't think to... Let's take a look at the knockdown here. After using his jab, Hagler had had, had Antifermo very jab conscious, and he came across with the left hand. There's a jab right over the eye. It's a good straight jab, a right jab. That one was a little bit lower under the eye. And obviously, Antifermo had to be very conscious, and there was a left hand, a short, straight left hand, as Antifermo was looking again for that right jab. Here it is from another angle, I believe. There's the right hand over the eye, the right under the eye, and now watch that left hand, a straight left hand. And I think, having seen it now, it looked like he caught Antifermo coming in and a little bit off balance. It wasn't a devastating blow, and obviously for the rest of the round, there, didn't, there weren't any serious effects on Antifermo. As we said, that it seemed to just stun him more than it did hurt him. I don't think I've ever seen a fighter like Antifermo who, who went further with his will and so little skill. I don't think there's any question about it. The first round, but, of course, having a profound effect on the fight, although right at this juncture of the fight, you would have to say that it's Marvin Hagler's fight regardless. The blood really has not so much gotten in the eyes of Vito Antifermo. And, and Marvin Fermo. Hagler, if you notice, is boxing a lot now. He's uh, from the outside coming in, and as we said before, jabbing and jabbing and coming across with that effective left. Looks as though there could be a little bit of a cut on the brow now, the left eye of Vito Antifermo, too, although that may just be blood from the top of the head. This fight is beginning to resemble a fight I saw many years ago, the second Sugar Ray robinson Basilio fight, in which Basilio's left eye looked like a gargoyle. It was closed early on. Well, you saw that right hand by Marvin Hagler, and Antifermo now is cut under the right eye. Antifermo is being beaten to the punch at all times. He just won't stay on the outside. He must get on the inside. 
and the blood really showing actually from under the right eye of Anto Antifermo even more than the cut from the butt. It is well under the right eye, alongside the bridge of the nose, actually. Antifermo also has a swelling now around the right eye. It's kind of black and blue down below this hip. And bleeding from below that. Yeah. What had happened before the operation with Antifermo is that he actually bled internally first, and then, of course, the blood had no place to go, so it cut much easier. That was the reason he had that operation in the first place, was to smooth out. I think he's opened it now. This supraorbital ridge above his eyes. Yes. How's that for yeah. a non-doctor? You know your anatomy quite good, don't you, Barry? <laughs> don't you believe it? I read books. <laughs> My mother still wants me to be a doctor. Uh, not too late. Got to have something to fall back on when you're in this business. Once again, Marvin Hagler forcing the action here and really having it all his own way. And now Antifermo comes back a little bit. Antifermo fighting on guts, there's no question. And the most blood now, ironically, on Antifermo shows from the right side of his face, which was not the side of his face that was damaged early on. Antifermo takes so many punches just to get one to two in. It looks like another headbutt. Oh, now Antifermo seemed to deliberately butt him. And now Hagler gets the warning, and more blood shows from now the right brow of Vito Antifermo. It is not pretty. Security in the ring, don't you think? 
It is a mob scene in the ring right now, but it's been a fight that has been, as we mentioned, wrought with controversy right from the beginning. There was controversy before the fighters ever got into the ring. There was controversy at the rules meeting yesterday. There was controversy at the weigh-in today. And we get to the fight itself, and right away there is more controversy. Another great irony is the simple fact that at the rules meeting yesterday, during which time there was all this discussion about just what could be used on the cuts, Freddie Brown kept quiet. Tonight, he was the guy that was doing the screaming. Right now, let's go up to Larry Merchant, who was with the winner, Marvin Hagler. Okay, Marvin, how did you see what happened in the first round? Well, you see, in the first round, Ed promo comes straight at me with his head. That was his own fault. He knows that he's uh, uh, vulnerable to cuts and everything like that. Seemed like he would have tried to keep away or whatever instead of ramming straight on with his head. You're not suggesting that he did it deliberately. He was just leading with his head. No, he was. And in our first fight, that's what he done here. But I'm glad that we had a great referee today that was very aware of everything. And... Uh, he watched the butts, he watched the holdings and everything. So I felt very confident there. At least I had a good referee in there. And I just wanted to, I really wasn't loosening up yet. I was just starting to put things together. What did you think of all of the furor that was going on in his quarter with Freddie Brown? Brown apparently wanted the fight stopped on a technicality. And meanwhile, he was giving Ed DeFermo a chance to heal. Sure. Well, you know, I think that they did come in with some of that stuff on top of his head. I don't know what they were using, but it's kind of dangerous to another fighter because that stuff gets in my eyes, and which it did. I went back to my corner, and he wiped it out of my eyes. It's kind of bad. It blinds a fighter. Uh, once the fight continued, were you deliberately going for that cut? It did not appear to no, be in a I dangerous to place. Out. I was just putting my punches together, which you see me just starting to loosen up, putting my combinations together. I felt like I was a little tight in the beginning, but I knew that this guy wasn't the same fighter that I fought back there in 79 because he was much too easy, and he, he gave me, I moved, had a little bit more distance. Like I said, after that fight there with Antifermo the first time, I went back to school. What did Antifermo say to you at the end? First of all, I just want to say that Antifermo helped me buy my mother right there a house. <laughs> and I want to say thank because it's her birthday, June 17th, and that house will be hers. What did he say to you at the end? Well, he wants another rematch or whatever like that. Hey, it's not fair way how things have to end that way, but hey, in this game, everything counts. So uh, Where do it you wasn't go fair the way they took it from me in the draw either. Where do you go from here? Is Ham Show, it seems to be the only middleweight I'm who leaving. has earned a clear shot at you. If we can make big money the way that I want to make the money, a million dollars or more, I know that gladly we'll take the fight. Yeah. What about all the welterweights that seem that, like, like they can't wait to get a shot at you? Sugar Ray Leonard, Tommy Hearns, Wilfredo Benitez. That's good. If I was a weak champion, they would have been on top of me sooner. But I'm a strong champion. I just want to concentrate on this division bring the respect back to the middleweight division. And if Sugar Ray Leonard or Tommy Hearns want to move up into my division, come on, fella, because I'm looking for a big payday. When, we, when you were at ringside with us at HBO for the Sugar Ray Leonard fight, you took a look at Leonard for four or five rounds, and you said, I think he should stay as a welterweight. Yeah, I do feel that way. I still feel that way. Uh, I think that all the titles should be combined. I am the true 100% champion, and I do like that because I have both belts. And uh, I feel very happy today, Larry. Well, unfortunately, we wanted you to take a look at our at our monitor. Maybe we can bring up that headbutt if we can roll our tape here so that you well, can take a look at exactly what happened in the fight. But that butt was very accidental. I remember that because I was going down looking for a body shot. I think th this is the second butt of the fight, Marvin. Would you, would you tell us what you see here? I'm trying to use the straight. There it is right there. I was going down for the body, which is a good combination. You use a straight right jab, and then you go under with the body shot. And he was coming down at the same time I was, and that's how the headbutt collided. But at that time, the official warned you. Let's take a look at it again. Yeah, but you can see All that right, now, now we're gonna crunch. Now we're going to take a look at the knockdown. You were jabbing him just before the knockdown. That was a beautiful shot there, dead on the money. He never knew what happened. He was down on that one. That, that came quick. Even myself, I didn't know it was out there. Now, came quick. now, in the first fight, he, you dominated the first half of the fight, and he came back later. Were you I concerned? wasn't going to let that happen this time. I wasn't going to let it happen. I knew I could get him in the earlier rounds. I was just starting to put things together. I figured with a little bit more, the referee had to stop this fight. This is a very serious game, and people get seriously hurt. If the blood got in his eyes or something where he couldn't see, I could have maybe damaged him real bad. To so myself, I really didn't care because I want to swat that mosquito. Thank you very much, Marvin Hagler, and back, back to Barry at ringside. Okay, thank you, Larry, and the middleweight champion, still the middleweight champion, Marvin Hagler. Let's get the official word right now from Nuno Cam. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Referee stops the bout, the fifth round, the winner by a TKO, and still middleweight champion of the world, Marvelous Marvin Hagbaugh. All right, it takes two sides to make every fight. Larry Merchant right now is with the other side of this fight, an unfortunate Vito Antifermo. Larry. Vito, how did you see or feel what happened to you in the first round? Well, the, the first round, uh, I might have believed that it was intentional, but because I got butt on top of the head, so I might have been an intentional butt. The referee warned both of us, watch for the head, but meanwhile, I got a card he didn't. But the second time, he butted me with his head, and he right in the eye, you could see it right there. He got a point taken away from I got a point taken away from intentional point. There, I mean, was, the there was no doubt about the second butt in which he lowered his head and did hit you, but in the first butt, our replay showed definitely that in your leading to him, that you did hit him. Let's take a look at it right here. Describe what you see. Okay, I'm going, yeah, yeah right, right there. there. Well, you see what he said? You see what he said? He butted his head down? He put his head right into him. Look right at him. Well, well, well go, back. Back. go back. Go back with him. You see? Why they supposed to be stuck? Well, there were two forces meeting there. We'll try to roll that tape again and try to see it again. It certainly was an accidental butt, but let's take a look at it once again. See who's moving hey. forward. Okay, I'm a little more. Uh, yeah, but he moved, yeah. he moved through his head, right head right down. Supposed to be drunk. He moved his head down. What was Freddie Brown? Was he trying to stop the fight or just give you time for your, heel, no, for your wound no, to heal? No, no, he was telling the referee that he should be disqualified. But I didn't care. The first time I didn't care, I wanted to go on because I know I could do it. You know? You, you but were then the second you, time he did it again, and that time I know he was on purpose. That was only the first time. I didn't even notice until so now. The, but the second time was, uh, it was definitely but. Uh, intentional butt. Vito, thank you very, very much. You're a brave fellow. Just, thank you. Just too much. You give just. You gave just too much blood for your cause. Here's the second butt. Yeah. There it is. Uh, uh, see, see what it said there. I mean, you know, listen. At that point, the referee. Of, go back. Go back with it. I like to go back with it. It seemed that when you you both went down at that time, he was going no, forward. But meanwhile, he butted me yeah, with the top watch, of the head. Watch, watch this. Watch. Watch I'm going it. in with the right. He put. Look at him. Oh, look okay. What is that? What is that? Okay. Down and up with it. Hey, what you gotta be blind? It just looks like you just sprung too many leaks again, Vito. Good try. Well, I guess so, but uh, I think I think they should call it in a uh, draw. Will I you mean, fight again? That, well, definitely. If they give me a rematch, definitely I will fight him again. Thank you very much, Vito. Back to Barry and Arthur at ringside. Okay, so you can see Vito Antifermo, in his opinion at least, has a very sound case. Now, you're a referee, Arthur Mercanti. How do you see it? What do you do? Do you call it a draw? Well, would you uh, have called it a draw? Well, it seems, no, I wouldn't have called it a draw. It seems to me that they both collided simultaneously, really. Uh, it's the style, it's the style of the match that created that, that, those two butts. Uh, Vito comes in with his head, and uh, and uh, Hagler also comes down with his head, and there's a collision. It's like two mules hitting one another, and it's uh, it, it's one uh, one is going to be the one at disadvantage, and in this case it was Vito. But this is the style of the fight; they both collided together. Well, and of course, the results were inevitable. Once again, we talked about what a role the referee would play in this fight, and certainly he was the pivotal character. Yeah, it was a, it, it was a very, very difficult fight for David to handle. And uh, Freddie Brown, of course, uh, created an awful lot of uh, consternation in there by coming into the ring. He should have been taken out quickly. Well, Jerry Cooney has joined us ringside here. Jerry, let me ask you, first of all, I feel like I should wear a face mask here. I put Howard Cosell on the injured list yesterday, but <laughs> be that as it may, let me ask you how you saw it. What did you see in the butt? How did you see this fight? Well, I think that there was two great fighters fighting here today, and I don't think it's the way Marvin wanted to keep his title, and I'm sure it's not the way Vito wanted the fight to be stopped. It's just an accident headbutts. They had two headbutts, and uh, the cuts became severe. It's just one of those things that I guess is the nature of the beast. Let's talk a little bit about what's going on with Jerry Cooney right now. You were at the fight yesterday in Detroit. How did you see that fight? And let's talk about your own plans. Well, um, uh, Spinks came out, and, uh, and uh, Larry Holmes, you saw it all, stopped him. So he looked well. I, th I don't think that the fight should have been stopped. I think that the Michael Spinks jumping into the ring and throwing a towel and scared the referee a little bit and he stopped the fight. I, I could see Vito's eyes. I was taking pictures from ringside, and he wasn't hurt. 
I mean, he was hurt, but then he was coming to, he was getting out of it, and I stopped the fight, but that's the breaks, that's the fight game. What did you learn in that fight, just in watching the fight? Well, you learn to watch the styles, you see the styles, the openings, but right now I'm fighting Mike Weaver in October. Uh, the WBA is not sanctioning the fight, and I think it's a sad thing for boxing, and especially for me that I've been ranked number one for 15 months, and they're taking the title away from the heavyweight champion, Mike Weaver, for fighting the number one contender. I can't see how that can happen in boxing. I think it was absolutely, it's got to be very gratifying to you when you walked in here tonight, the recognition that you're getting. All of a sudden, people are starting to notice Jerry Cooney and notice him not only just as an up-and-coming fighter, but as a fighter who's there. Well, I just want to be a fighter, a clean fighter, and do right for boxing and for myself. And it's a great feeling coming here to Boston. I've never been here before, and getting such a reception, it's a great feeling. Jerry, the popularity is just terrific. Thanks so much for stopping down, taking the time nice to, to talk with here. us. Continued Good success luck. to you. Let's go up to the ring right now to Larry Merchant, who has some thoughts. Larry. Well, as I said earlier, this isn't a rose garden. What happened here tonight comes under the heading of the fortunes of war. And sometimes fights end this way because the stronger man sometimes is just stronger in his skin as well as in the other weapons that he brings to the fight. Right now, it's our understanding that Marvin Hagler, who is the only undisputed champion around, maybe there just aren't enough middle, good middleweights to have two champions, will fight Mustafa Hamshow next, probably in the fall and probably in Italy. And after that, all that big money he wants, he can get shots at Benitez, at Leonard and Hearns down the road if they want a piece of him, and they can have him. <laughs> Back to you, Barry and Arthur. Okay, well-chosen words, I think, from Larry Merchant. Thank you for those comments, Larry. I don't think there was really any great question as to how the outcome was going to be. It was